Hello everyone and welcome back. In this session, we will be introduced to the complementary number systems. So, without any further ado, let's get to learning. Coming to the outcome of today's session, today we will begin with the need of the complementary number system. Thereafter, we will observe what is the complementary number system and the different types of it. Finally, we will learn about the representations of the complementary number system with respect to the different number systems which we have learned so far. In our digital electronics course, we have come across the 4-bit parallel adder which is also known as the 4-bit ripple carry adder. Since it is supposed to add two different 4-bit numbers, that is the reason why during its construction, four full adders are needed. Now, a 4-bit number specified by the variable A is first fed to the respective full adders. Now, as you can see, all the different bit places are named differently, right? Basically, A0 is the least significant bit of A, whereas A3 is the most significant bit. So, this is one number. Now, for the addition to take place, another 4-bit number specified by the variable B will be needed to be fed to the respective full adders as well. Now, for the full adder, which is supposed to add the LSBs, there will be no carry. Hence, its carry input is naturally grounded. Now, let's focus on the addition procedure. Once A0 and B0 are added, the FA will produce the sum S0 and the carry C0. Now, until C0 is produced, this full adder can't perform its addition. So, once it has all the input bits, that is A1, B1 and the carry coming out of the least significant full adder, that is C0, this FA can now perform the addition. Now, this one will produce the sum S1 and the carry C1 and the same process will be followed throughout till we acquire the result, that is C3, S3, S2, S1 and S0. Now, this is known as the parallel adder or the ripple carry adder because in this architecture, the carries are propagated just like ripples. Now, this architecture can only perform addition. So, for subtraction, we opt for another circuit. Now, think about it. Having different circuits for different different operations cumulatively will complex the design architecture of the computer, won't it? So, what if we could perform both the addition and the subtraction on a single circuit? Won't that be cool? Let's see what we can do about it. Now, to realize the stated idea, we need to look into the procedure of subtraction, that is, how subtraction takes place. Let's observe the 4-bit subtraction. Say we have a 4-bit number A, that is 1 triple zero. And we have another 4-bit number, B, that is 0001. Now, if we are to perform the subtraction in between these two, we will begin the process from the least significant bits, right? Now, 0 has lesser magnitude than 1, so in order to perform the subtraction, we need to borrow 1 from the bits towards the left of it. Now, we can borrow nothing from this one and this one. Now, this one's got 1, so we can borrow it and place it in here, which will make the previous place 0. Now, this is 1, 0. And 1, 0 in binary is 2 in decimal. So, 1 plus 1 forms 1, 0 in binary. So, if we borrow 1 from this one and place it in here, in the previous place, we will be left with the remaining 1. I hope you are getting it. Previously, it was 1, 0, that is 2 in decimal. We borrowed 1 to make this one 1, 0. So, we are left with the remaining 1 in here. Simple. Now, this one is 1, 0. If we perform the same drill, we will be left with 1. And now, we can perform the subtraction, right? So, subtracting 1 from 1, 0, we will get the result as 1. Now, 1 minus 0 is 1. Here, it is also 1. And 0 minus 0 is 0. So, the obtained result is 0, triple 1. Now, tell me honestly, 
in this entire procedure, did anything seem tedious? If I'm guessing it right, it was the borrow procedure, correct? So here, the complementary number system comes at rescue. In complementary number system, for a number of base B, there are two types of complements. One is called the diminished radix complement, whereas the other one's called the radix complement. Well, they have got other names too. Since the base of the number is B, this one is also called B minus 1's complement and this one is called the B's complement. Well, it's pretty evident. Since the base or radix is B, the radix complement is called the B's complement. And here, we are making the radix become a little lesser or in other words, diminishing the radix and that's why the diminished radix complement is also known as the B minus 1's complement. Now, complementary number system actually helps us represent the negative magnitude of any number. Say there is a number A of base B. Now, the negative magnitude of A will be minus A. Now, we can also represent this minus A by A bar. Now, if A is a n-digit number, then the negative magnitude of A in B minus 1's complement will be represented by B raised to the power n minus 1 minus A. Basically, to come up with the negative magnitude, we are to subtract the value of A from the biggest value which can be represented by the n-digit number of base B. Now, this is n because we assumed that A is a n-digit number. And regarding this, we already have done an awful lot of discussions, haven't we? So, this is how negative A will be represented in diminished radix complement. Now, to determine the representation in B's or radix complement, we will first take the value of B minus 1's complement and then we will just add 1 to it. Now, these two ones will cancel themselves out. So, now we are left with B raised to the power n minus a. So, the value a bar base b in b minus 1's complement will be b raised to the power n minus 1 minus a and in b's complement, it will be b raised to the power n minus a. Now, the value of a bar base 2, that is, if a is a n-bit number of base 2, that is binary, then the value in diminished radix complement would be 2 raised to the power n minus 1 minus a and in radix 1, it would be 2 raised to the power n minus a. Now, in case of binary, since the base is 2, the radix complement is called the 2's complement and the diminished radix complement is actually 1 less than 2's, that is 1's complement. Now, for a n-digit negative number of base 3, the value in diminished radix complement would be 3 raised to the power n minus 1 minus a. And the value in radix complement would be 3 raised to the power n minus a, considering a is a number of base 3. Now, for base 3, the b's complement will be called 3's complement and b minus 1's complement is going to be called 3 minus 1, that is 2's complement. Now, observe, although this one and this one both have the same name 2's complement, they are very much different than one another as they pertain to different number systems. Now, if the negative a is an n-digit decimal number, then its 9's complement value would be 10 raised to the power n minus 1 minus a and the 10's complement representation would be 10 raised to the power n minus a. Finally, a bar base 16's representation in 15's complement would be 16 raised to the power n minus 1 minus a. And in 16's complement, it would be represented as 16 raised to the power n minus a. So, this is how the diminished radix complement and the radix complements are represented in different number systems. Well, don't worry if the representations seem a little complex to fathom. In the next session, we will see examples on it. So, in this session, we first understood the necessity of complementary number system. Then we saw what complementary number system actually is and its different types that is the diminished radix complement and the radix complement. Finally, we observed the representations of them with respect to the different number systems. 
All right, people, that will be all for this session. In the next session, we will observe various examples of complementary number system. So, I hope to see you in the next one. Thank you all for watching.